Dali lighting controls, simple to install, flexible to use, until of course they go wrong and then suddenly you're knee deep in a fault finding nightmare. At this point, you've got two options. Option one, swallow your pride, open your wallet and call in the commissioning engineer. They'll turn up, inspect your handiwork, raise an eyebrow at your wiring and politely suggest you may not have entirely followed the drawings. How embarrassing. Thankfully, there is another way. Meet the Probit site from Lichtvision Engineering, best described as a multimeter, but one that's built specifically for DALI lighting control systems. If you found yourself trapped in a DALI fault finding nightmare, you follow the drawings. But if you're honest, you're not entirely sure how DALI actually works. Then it might be a good idea to pause here and watch our introduction to DALI video. That'll give you a fighting chance of understanding what's going on. Now, if you've arrived here via a Google search, you may have read a few articles suggesting you can use a regular multimeter to test DALI. And yes, it will tell you there's some voltage present on the bus. You might even spot that the voltage changes slightly when a device sends a signal. But that's not exactly helpful when you're trying to track down why half the lights aren't working. Speaking of voltages, while the DALI bus is technically a low voltage digital signal system, it isn't isolated from the mains. In most installations, the DALI cabling is run to the same standards as mains wiring. That means when you're fault finding on a DALI system, you could very easily be working on a live system. And if the installation hasn't been done correctly, you might even find full mains voltage present on the DALI bus, which is a potentially dangerous situation. You should always treat DALI wiring with the same respect and precautions as mains voltage circuits. Thankfully, the Probit site is smart enough to detect this situation and will instantly alert you if it sees dangerous voltages. Connecting to the DALI bus is simple. Two four millimeter banana plugs, the same type you'll find on your regular testing instruments. The kit comes supplied with connection leads and crocodile clips, all rated to 1000 volts. So you're properly covered. Now, if you're working on one of the many modular wiring systems like Wheeland or Wago, it may be worth making up a simple test adapter to match the connectors you're dealing with. That way you can speed up the whole connection process on site. Before we dive deeper into what's actually happening on the DALI bus, there are a few other wiring and installation issues we can clear up. The Probit site will identify if there's a short circuit on the wiring. It will also tell you if too many devices have been connected to the bus. That's an easy mistake to make, especially on installations using modular wiring, where you've got multiple groups of the same type of lighting fixtures. The Probit site can also detect if an application controller is still connected and still sending control signals to the devices. In that case, the Probit site won't be able to operate properly. The application controller will need to be disconnected before testing. If there are no issues, then let's put the Probit site to work. Here's a sports lighting fixture we installed in the studio a few years ago. And we believe these wires, conveniently left in the trunking by the electrician, are for the DALI bus. So we can quickly connect the Probit site and run a scan to see if anything is actually connected. What surprised us was that the fixture actually includes includes two separate DALI devices, we can move into the report section and start to see some real data for the devices. We can see that the signal quality is healthy, the lamp is operating and everything appears to be functioning as expected. We can also send a signal to identify the individual devices so we know exactly which fitting or which part of the fitting we're talking to. Next up, we've gathered a mixture of different DALI fixtures and drivers we had lying around the workshop and connected them together to form a common DALI bus. Repeating the scan function function on the Probit site, we can see that four devices are connected to the bus. During the scan, we're able to see the data frames being transmitted on the bus, along with the live voltage level. When the scan finishes, we can immediately see that the signal quality is healthy, but one of the devices is reporting a lamp error. At this point, we've got options. We can identify all devices simultaneously, making it easy to locate the faulty fixture visually, or we can scroll through the report to inspect each device individually. As we scroll through, we get detailed information for each device, including manufacturer data and the specific control gear in use. In this case, we can see that the CU power device is reporting a lamp problem. And in this instance, the problem is simple. The LED panel simply hadn't been connected to the driver. Once repaired, we run a quick rescan and we can see that the system is now working correctly. Now, while we're here, let's just quickly clear up the difference between DALI and DALI 2 because it's a question that comes up a lot, especially when you're fault finding. And no, DALI 2 isn't the sequel to some obscure horror movie. Although if you've ever tried fault finding an old system without the right test gear, you might feel like you're in one. The original DALI standard has been around for quite a while. And to be honest, it was a bit of a wild west. 
Some manufacturers only partially implemented the standard. There was no real requirement for compatibility testing. So while everything was technically DALI, devices from different manufacturers didn't always play nicely together. DALI 2 changes that. First, it tightens up the standard itself. Manufacturers now have to submit products for independent certification, which massively improves cross-manufacturer compatibility. Second, DALI 2 adds a whole range of new supported device types, not just luminaires and drivers, but sensors, push buttons, relays, application controllers, all fully supported. It also brings proper support for advanced lighting control, RGB color change, dynamic white, and emergency lighting integration. And because of that, DALI 2 also provides much better diagnostics and fault reporting, which is where tools like the Probit site really come into their own. The Probit site includes a database of the approved DALI 2 devices. So as manufacturers include more data, that information becomes visible directly on the Probit site during scans. And just to be clear, the Probit site can still be used to diagnose older DALI 1 devices as well. The Probit site is powered by an internal lithium ion battery. It's rechargeable via a standard USB-C connector, so no special charges to worry about. On a full charge, you'll get around eight hours of usable testing time, more than enough to get you through most fault finding and commissioning jobs. And to help preserve battery life, the device includes an automatic power off function if you happen to get distracted mid-test or leave it sitting on site while you're tracing cables. If you want to find out more about the Probit site, including current pricing and where to buy, we've put a link in the description. We've found the Probit site a really intuitive device to use, even if you've got very limited experience with setting up DALI systems. And that makes it ideal for a few different scenarios. Firstly, if you're installing a new DALI lighting control system, you can be confident that everything is correctly wired before you hand it over to the commissioning engineer, which can ultimately reduce commissioning costs and avoid any embarrassing callbacks. Secondly, if you work in maintenance, you can quickly diagnose faults, isolating whether the issue is at the fixture level or somewhere in the building wiring. What's also important to note is that the Probit site is a diagnostic tool. When you're testing a system, you're not making any alterations to the existing programming or addressing. If you do need to replace and address a new control gear, you'll need to carry that out using the system that was originally used to program the installation. That means you might be able to avoid needing access equipment for difficult to reach fixtures. Fittings. Or if you do need to get up there, you can be ready with the correct replacement parts on hand. Let me know in the comments if you've got any further questions about DALI fault finding or if you'd like to share your own experiences of tracking down faults.